I'm going to paint two chickens today because I like painting chickens. They're a great fun exercise or a standalone painting or you add them to a landscape. I've also put together a handy cheat sheet. Just look in the description for the free link. Okay, let's start with a quick sketch. I'm keeping it really simple and I follow a triangular shape for chickens mostly. That's my framework. And then I just round off the um, belly and the tail. This one's quite an inquisitive chicken, so it's sort of got a forward leaning motion and tail feathers upright. Now it comes to head, the head's always quite small. Same as when I draw people, um, I always make the head a little bit smaller than what you think it should be. When heads are too big, anything looks quite awkward and wrong. And there's a tiny beak, and then I draw the comb on top. And now I just sort of got to find the natural place for the legs, sort of halfway down the center line of the body. And this chicken is a little bit foreshortened, so we can see a little bit more of the one side than the other um, but with the legs it's just important that it feels right that it that the legs support the body weight of the posture so this chicken definitely is leaning forward a bit um, but has has anchored now I'm starting with the watercolor so I've just grabbed a pretty light wash of raw sienna and I think I dropped in a little bit of quinacridone gold just to give it a bit of warmth and glow and then as I go down the body I'll add a bit of burnt umber to it as to darken it and like with anything you paint in watercolor try and vary the colors add a bit of different pigments and water it down in some places just to give variation don't make it just one solid block of color the beauty of watercolor is the mixing of pigments and the flowing between different colors and values. So I'm now getting quite dark at the bottom there uh, and where the legs are and the same for the tail feathers. Just with that burnt umber mixed in with the raw sienna. You can also use sepia or van dyke brown or really any color you like. The point here really is just to get a tonal variation from the light that's hitting the back and at the bottom of the body that's a bit in shade and then I'll pull that color in also for the for the head and give that a bit of more strength there down the spine and that's it I probably have to let that dry the body at least but before I do I'll paint in some of the legs they are straight we can't see the knees they are hidden underneath the feathers um, I'm using, I think it's almost a um, pure yellow there, maybe a little bit orange. Didn't really like the feet, so I'm just going to add a bit of ground for the chicken to stand on and bury bury the, the toes or the claws. What are they called? I don't know. Okay, and then um, the head doesn't have a lot of pigment on. It's not very wet, so I can go in with a cadmium red light and paint in the wattle which is the thing that hangs off the chin and the comb on top and it's nice when it bleeds in a little bit into the head that will connect those two elements much better with the chicken. Now I'm going to draw in a second chicken and that one will be front facing so we're going to look at it head on. So again start with the triangle shape in mind. It actually probably looks a bit more like a pear to be honest. That's another good way of thinking about the chickens but this one's I'm going to make look sideways so that those two chickens have got a I bit mean, of a communication going on between them it makes for a bit more of an interesting little composition and there comes the wattle and the comb and the comb is looking a little bit back so the, the comb can be a way of giving your chickens a bit of character and expression it's a bit like a hairstyle really that's how you can think about it or that's like how I like to think about it there are the legs, this time definitely straight down the middle as the chicken is standing upright. Now, for painting I'm going to start with a wetting 
the body of the chicken first and then dropping in a very light wash of cerulean with a bit of uh, burnt sienna just to give it a bit of a grey tone to it. This is a white chicken so what I'm really painting now is the shadows or the white feathers that are not in the in the full light. So I'm leaving the chest white and then just paint around it the belly, the legs and where the feathers go and a bit on the breast as well. But making sure that I leave a big highlight in that upper chest area and then just gently paint around it a little bit of shadow for the neck. Now I've let that dry and now I'm coming in for the second wash. I didn't want the red comb and waddle to bleed too much into the face and the neck so I had to let that dry but here I am again with a pretty strong red a little in crimson with a tiny bit of cat red but you mix whatever red colors you like it doesn't matter next up are the legs uh, again a yellow or orange color will do there pick whatever you've got in your palette and this little chicken will get some actual toes or claws a little bit of darker at the top where the shadow sits underneath the body and then the, while I've got that paint on my brush I'll also do the beaks of both of the birds now I want to add some detail to the brown chicken I'm using my goat hair brush for that one I've mixed a really thick mix of burnt umber and ultramarine it's a really creamy mix and then I'm going to add the tail feathers and then some shadow under the wing at the bottom of the body and then also just outlining that spine a bit more going into the head separating the head from the comb. Then I've spread out the hairs of my brush a bit to create a bit of texture for the feathers and just lightly dry brush that. And now with a clean synthetic brush I'm just wetting those edges just to make them a bit softer. For the eyes I'm using a fine rigger brush to outline the face there a bit just to add a bit more definition. I'm going to do the same for the brown chicken but added a bit of red to it just to connect it a bit more with that wattle there. Brown chickens have a bit more of a red face but it really depends on what your chicken looks like it doesn't have to be too precise so I've let that dry and now I'm going to remove some of the pencil marks that uh, are just annoying me a little bit because they sort of interfere with the detail and then a tiny drop of white gouache just for that bit of a highlight in the eyes that always brings anything to life and that's it our chickens are hatched i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and try it for yourself thanks for watching